All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. It's our second daily webinar of the week, our Tuesday webinar. So hope you guys are all doing well, and we are going to jump right into things. Um, so first and foremost, I'm just going to refresh the economic calendar, make sure we have the most up-to-date information. It is currently 10.06 in the morning where I am, so keep in mind that these times on the chart is for where I am in Thailand going to be a lot different than where you are. So make sure you're, if you're looking at the economic calendar with me right now, that it is set to your time. Um, so over the next 24 hours, we have some bank stress tests and BOE financial stability reports. So we have some pound news that's coming out over the next couple of hours. Um, that shouldn't affect us too much. We aren't in any pound trades, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, we're currently in five trades, and none of them are the pound. They're all like euro, yen, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, that type of thing. Uh, now, some things that could be of some concern is, and not, not I wouldn't even necessarily say concern, it's just going to move the markets, is our preliminary GDP uh, for the dollar this, well, when I say this evening, for me, it's going to be in the morning for most of you guys that are in the uh, northern part or the western part of the world in North America and I just want you guys to understand you know and this is all covered in the course the different types of GDPs and breaking down what they are but um, just know that there's an advanced GDP you can actually see right here advanced GDP preliminary GDP and a final GDP um, and it says right here there are three versions of GDP released a month apart it says the advanced GDP is the earliest and thus tends to have the most impact Okay, so pretty much like the advanced is where, you know, it, it kind of creates that sentiment in the market. Preliminary is just before the final, of course. And then final, by the final, they, they generally already under, they already have a good idea of what the actual GDP is going to be. So, or, or the closest estimate, I can say. So that's why it has the least impact because the markets have already priced in that move for the most part, okay? Um, now this, this, uh, will probably move the dollar index. This will probably move the dollar, meaning it'll probably move the Euro USD. Okay. Euro dollar. And it will also probably move our USD Swiss franc trade. So we're going to, we're going to continue to let our trade run, um, see where it gets within a couple, um, hours of this coming out. Keep in mind it's still 10 and a half hours away. So pretty far away. Um, other than that, again, another market mover for the dollar is, uh, it's going to be, mo again, if you guys are in the, the western part of the world in North America, it's going to be like early morning slash middle of the day for you guys tomorrow um, when we see Mr. Jerome Powell, who is the chairman of the Federal Reserve, speaking. Um, and what he's going to mo mostly be speaking on is the rate hikes, or the interest rate hikes and, and all that, the drama going on with that. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the interest rate hikes, there's been three interest rate hikes this year. There's supposed to be a fourth one in December, in the third week of December. I believe it's like December 18th or 19th really quickly. Let's go ahead and just look at the calendar for the week of 18th through the 19th. Yeah, right here. Actually, December 20th. Well, okay, yeah, I mean, 20th because it's here in Thailand. 2 a.m. on the 20th here in Thailand for me, which is the 19th, the, the afternoon of the 19th for the Western part of the world. So the 19th uh, is 19th slash 20th, whatever you want to call it, is when we're going to see an interest rate decision. That does not necessarily mean that they are raising or lowering interest rates. Now, there has been a lot of talk about, the, I mean, not just a lot of talk, they planned, and this was even planned last year, uh, on the last Fed meeting of December of 2017, they, they had said and scheduled four interest rate decisions for the US dollar, uh, or to raise interest rates four times this year. They've, they've followed through with their plan so far, they've raised interest rates three times, um, they're supposed to raise it a fourth time. However, there has been some talk with the previous meeting minutes that came out, which was not this week, but it was last week. If we go ahead and just look at last week's calendar very quickly, you can see, where was it? Maybe it was it. Wow. Are these weeks just flying by this fast? Let's see. Where, where was the meeting minutes? Sorry, guys. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter when exactly when the mon when the, meeting okay i was i was thinking okay there was a meeting minutes that came out well hold on this is kind of bothering me let me find it i 
Okay, um, I'm gonna have to find it. But there was there was a meeting minutes. So it doesn't it doesn't matter where where it was or necessarily when it was. All we need to know is it was on the last meeting minutes that was released. They talked about um, in the last FOMC meeting that happened. They talked about um, potentially not raising it. Uh, not, they didn't they didn't necessarily say we aren't gonna raise interest rates or we aren't potentially maybe going to raise interest rates in December. They just hinted at things that could mean that they, that uh, the growth is moving faster than expected and they don't need to raise interest rates quite as quick. Okay. So that's essentially what they do or what they said. And so that may have an effect on what happens on the third week of December when that interest rate decision comes out. And so that in turn is a fundamental driver of the market. I highly recommend if you guys, if this is like another language to you guys, you know, if you've been in Forex for a little bit now, especially if you've been in Forex for like a year or going on two years and you, and you don't follow interest rate decisions, you don't follow what the Fed is saying, I highly recommend doing that, guys. Um, I actually keep a couple different things um, on my chart or on my calendar right here. Okay, here is when we could, I could have just done this. Watch, just open up a new tab, go right here, go to FOMC minutes right here. So I keep this bookmarked. This is a, the .gov website directly from the Federal Reserve right here, guys. It's the best place to get your information from directly from the source. And you can see, okay, um, when was the meeting minutes? October. Oh, okay. I, time has seriously flown by that quick. I was thinking of this statement. Okay, I needed to go back one more week. So the statement from November. So the statement was from this on the 7th to the 8th, depending on where you are, that came out. And I mean, we aren't gonna dissect the statement right now. We've, we talked about the statement in previous webinars, but that's the statement. And then there's gonna be a meeting minutes that is gonna be released for this statement, which I guess hasn't even come out yet. Let's see. So that, that should probably come out in next week. Let's see. Not next week, maybe the week after that. Okay, this is kind of bothering me. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna go here, October 17th. We're gonna go to October very quickly, not December 2017. We're gonna go to October 17th that week. We're gonna go down to the meeting minutes. We're gonna click here and then we're gonna see next release, November 30th. Oh, is it's this week. It's okay. Hold on. It's this week. Okay. I guess, I guess I've, I've just a little bit turned around. Oh, it's right here. It's not okay. Yeah, it's Friday. Okay. So it's Friday or I guess Thursday afternoon for most of you guys. Okay. There we go. Everything makes sense now. Meeting minutes. There we go. So this, if you guys don't know what minutes are, all right, minutes are write this down in your trading journal if you need to. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's a simple concept though. It's minutes are, it's not just used in Forex, like literally minutes of meetings it's like if you've ever been to like a board meeting for like a school district or a board meeting for literally anything, there's somebody that literally is like a, what do they call them? A, um, a stenographer. I, f I think that's the right word, right? Somebody that actually types down like word for word, everything that happened. And now you can see, here's like the previous meeting minutes. Okay. It's not necessarily word for word. It's a, it's a synopsis. It's a, like a very well articulated article synopsis of the meeting. So you can see right here, see minutes of the federal open meeting committee from December 25th to December 26th. So this was the minutes for that meeting from December or from September 25th to 26th. So you can see, Oh, I did not mean to close it out guys. Let's go here real quick one more time. Sorry, I know I'm all over the place, but it is what it is. All right, so that meeting minutes came out on October 17th. Okay, so that well, we just clicked on that PDF, but the meeting actually happened on the 25th to the 26th. So it usually happens, like we can see like three weeks after the actual meeting. So November 7th through the 8th is when the last meeting was, and then we're gonna have the minutes released this Friday. And this that is gonna give us a very clear expectation of what the Fed is planning to do on the meeting on December 18th through the 19th. They meet eight times a year, guys, so this is the schedule, eight times a year. And during these meetings, they decide, they make a vote, they take a vote, and they say, okay, how many of you guys on the committee think we should raise interest rates? 
How many of you guys on the committee think we should keep interest rates the same? And how many of you guys on the committee think that we should lower interest rates? And then they take a vote and it is majority rules. All right. So it's not like uh, one person necessarily decides. They still have to agree on it. Um, there is a chair um, that decides um, or has say in it as well. But then there's, there's a committee, right? And they take a, a vote. Okay. Now, uh, going back to, so I know I kind of just went in a long, I digress, I digress a little bit. So let's get back to the calendar. All right. So those are a couple of things. Uh, we also have some GDP coming out in, oh, I'm sorry, we just talked about GDP. We just talked about Powell's speaking. And then before our next meeting, just a couple hours before we meet tomorrow, guys, we're going to see the um, New Zealand dollar business confidence. All right. Similar to like consumer confidence from a, but from a business perspective, if you guys don't know what consumer confidence is like right here, they take something like 5,000, I believe. Let's just double check. Survey, yeah, survey of about 5,000 households, which asks respondents to rate the relative level of current and future economic conditions, including labor availability, business conditions, and the overall economic situation, okay? So this is, a, that's why, I mean, it's literally what it says, consumer confidence, right? It's these households, they, how they feel, their sentiment on what the U.S. is doing and how the U.S. economy is going, and then that is rated on a scale, okay? So a couple news to come out. Don't, don't feel too overwhelmed right now, especially if you're new, but if you are not new and you're a year into Forex, two years into Forex, three years, however long into Forex, and this stuff is foreign to you, um, you need to get with the program, all right? You need to really get with the program. It's, it, the charts isn't everything, okay? The charts is a majority of it. It's, it's more than 50% of it, in my opinion. Like if I had to put, uh, like if I had to say a percentage of, out, of, out of 100% how much emphasis I put on the charts and how much emphasis I put on fundamental analysis, it's when, when I go to take a trade, an actual position, it all, I mean, it also depends on the type of trade, guys. If it's a swing trade, well, it might have more fundamental influence than technical influence because the long-term technical or the long-term fundamental drivers in the market. If it's an intraday trade, well, it may be mostly technical based and not very fundamental based. So keep that in mind that that scale is a little subjective depending on the trade. Okay. But that is the news for the next 24 hours. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. Okay. Uh, what I've done too, I know you guys probably see some different colors. I've been, I've been changing things, cleaning things up, you know, really just making sure I, that I am on point and doing the best things that I can do. Um, right now what I'm doing and choosing my color scheme is you guys know that there's all these different color tags that you can pick. They did, they made this update a couple of months ago, I believe. Um, it was never like this. It used to be just a little red tag that you could do. It was never a, a bunch of different colors, which is really cool. I like it a lot. Um, I don't know why they didn't think of that before. It's kind of one of those simple things like, why didn't anybody think of that before, right? But it's here. And what I've chosen to do is in, that needs to be red. Um, any trades that we're currently in, I'm using purple, okay? So these five trades that you see marked off on purple is what we're in right now. Um, and any trades that are red are trades that I'm looking at, future potential setups, and then if it's not marked, it doesn't mean that I'm not looking at it, just not super interested in it at the moment, okay? So let's just start off with the dollar index. Let's see what the dollar index is doing. By the way, guys, I found out something so, so awesome. I didn't even, I mean, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but you can have, you guys notice how I have two different sets of pivot points on here? The, the, bit, the larger one, the longer one is the weekly pivots. And the smaller one is the daily pivots. So I can have, it's so cool. I can have daily pivots and weekly pivots on the same chart. So awesome. Love it. So awesome. But if you guys are brand new to this and you don't know what pivot points are, I mean, I wouldn't even recommend using, I'm not even, I actually, I mean, you just type in pivot points and you put it on, you put it, it's pivot point standard. You do that. But I wouldn't even recommend, like, if you don't even know what pivot points are and you don't know what you're doing, then there's no point of even putting it on your chart because you don't want to like, if you don't even know how to use it or what it's there for then it doesn't make any sense to even have it on your chart right now, okay? So wait, wait, if you have no idea about that, wait for the trainings. There's a whole lesson on pivot points. I go over it. Um, it's pretty cool. Okay. Anyways, let's look at, talk about the dollar index. So starting off on the weekly, you guys know that two weeks ago, so not last week, but the week before last, we saw a bearish 
a very bearish exhaustion candle on the dollar index. I know a lot of the markets, it created a lot of sentiment to selling the dollar. You know, we were at some really extreme highs for this year, right? This is the beginning of 2018, all the way back here. And that's the highs of this year, right? So we kind of like made a big exhaustion candle at the highs of this year, pretty big pretty big deal. Also, this was the previous highs back in August 13th. So we had came back to the previous highs um, and bounced off of those highs. Um, now, what I think we're seeing right now is a lot of manipulation in the market. And it's something that I've, I have actually been talking about in the daily webinars. Now, if we add in the lines and the different trend lines, a lot of people are looking at, and I'm not, I'm not disregarding it by any means, guys. I see it too, right? There's this inverted, there's this on the weekly, there's this very, very, very large head and shoulders that is being formed, okay? But it's still not completed, right? If you guys go and you read, if you even just go on like babypips.com or just Google head and shoulders in the textbook way, the way everybody teaches to trade head and shoulders, which is correct. I'm not saying it's the wrong way to trade head and shoulders. It's the right way, but there's a very fine line between when, like how to trade it. Everybody always wants to take a buy or a sell at either the bottom of an inverted head and sh shoulders, or if it's a normal head and shoulders, everybody wants to take a sell at the top of the right head and shoulders. Now, it's not, I, I said this yesterday with head and shoulders. It's not terrible, right? If you can get it, if, every, if, there, if there's other things besides the head and shoulders, there's a reason to sell it at the, at the top of the right shoulder. You have a good risk to reward ratio. You're, you know, your stop loss is appropriate. Your take profit is appropriate. There's confluence of other factors in the market. Then go for it, okay? There, there's, you're, because I don't want to sound like a hypocrite by saying that you don't do that because there's probably times we've done it in the past because, but it's not just because, Oh, I think that this right shoulder is going to form. And you hear, you heard that word that I said, I think that it's going to happen. No, right. I, I don't, I, I'm using confluence of other things. The proper way to trade ahead and shoulders, going back to this larger example is you're supposed to wait for the neckline, which is, I mean, I'm sure all, if you don't know what the neckline is, just Google it guys, Google or wait for the course. Neckline is very simple. It's the, the neckline. I don't know any other way to put it. It's like this. It's where the left shoulder came down to the bottom and the, the first part of the right shoulder came down as well. Okay. That's the neckline. That's what forms. And there can be, and there's different time. There's different types. There's like three different types of head and shoulders too. There's an ascending head and shoulders. There's a descending head and shoulders. And then there's just a flat head and shoulders. Like this would be a flat head and shoulders, right? This right here is an ascending inverted head and shoulders because it's moving up. Um, just like there's, you know, this could be a, let's, let's do like a descending head and shoulders, right? That would be a descending head and shoulders. Okay. So, oh, did not mean to do that. Let's just back up that a little bit. Okay. So, uh, textbook way. Anyways, you're supposed to wait for the neckline to break for that right shoulder to break the neckline. And then you're supposed to wait for a retest. And then that is where on the retest is where you are supposed to place your order at, okay? Is where you're supposed to enter if you're just trading on a head and shoulders. So from my perspective, this is not a completed head and shoulders. There's still very much move. There's still very much downside possible on the dollar. And I think that that's more than likely what we're gonna see happen. Um, and one reason is, is you know everybody, you have to understand that if we look at the dollar index on this four hour perspective, let me just kind of scale it in a little bit, okay? Remember this right here, this right here is that weekly candle, right? That goes up. Watch, we can actually mark it off right now. This is the beginning of that week. And then let's see where the end of that week is. Let's just see, you just look at the bottom and you see where the dates jump three days, right here. 19th to the 17th, you see right here? You see, look at the bottom where the dates are, 19th and then boom, 17, 19, 17, 19, 17. That's the weekend right there, okay? So that's the end of the week. So we place this right here okay so all of this price that you guys see right here is one week of price action on the dollar index okay and that's what created that exhaustion candle on the weekly is we saw price throughout that week push up and then ultimately price came down and that created a bearish exhaustion candle on the dollar index so what happens guys so what happens when that week starts and everybody is just you know, oh, wanting to over leverage their accounts and they want to, oh, I see this easy money coming this week. It's going to be dollars going to crap. It's going to, I'm going to sell the dollar index or, you know, essentially buy Euro USD is what you would do because it does the opposite. 
and I'm just going to make all this money in the market and I'm going to solve all my problems and I'm going to turn this thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars catching this drop on the dollar and oh, everything's going to be beautiful, right? That's what, that's what most traders think. Like, let's, let's be real, guys. That's what everybody's thinking, right? So this is the week and this is, the, this is, the, this is that, that week of price. So everybody sells the beginning of the week. Boom. They all sell. They're like, oh, and then they get into some nice profits and, and they don't use a stop loss. That's the thing, right? Or if they do use their stop loss, uh, they have their stop loss most likely above this area or above kind of like this, this liquidity area up here, okay? And then some people even have their stop losses all the way up here, depending on if they trade. But a majority, let's just say 75% or more of retail traders are going to not set their stop loss below, are not going to set their stop loss at all, right? They're just going to over leverage their account. You know, they have a thousand bucks in their account. They're going to sell with like two lots or whatever the most amount of leverage they can use. And they're just going to hope that it goes in their favor. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to pray, right? They're just going to sit there and pray that it goes in their favor. Okay. And then the market drops, right? And they're like, oh, this is looking good. Market starts to flag up. And then all of a sudden, shit hits the fan, right? They start to see that, oh, I mean, most people that over leverage their account, like super over leverage their account, this move right here is going to be enough to blow their account, right? This gap from the entry is enough to blow their account, okay? Other people are going to hold this trade and they're going to see price go down and down and down, and then they might even add on to their positions. <laughs> they see this flag and then they, they add on. They, they keep selling. They add on to their sells. And then all of a sudden, boom, new, high, new highs are made. In that addition of adding on to their trade and getting to their maximum margin use, it stops out this first trade, right? So they, already, they lost out on this first trade already. And now they have this second trade running, right? And they already, they already blew like more than 50% of their account, but they're holding on for dear life. And then price comes up, makes this big reversal, and then they add on to their, their trade again. Right. And then it just keeps going and going. I mean, you guys see the psychology of the market, right? And you, you, you guys have probably all been there. I've been there. I've done that. I've gotten the t-shirt guys. I've even gotten the picture and I got it framed. Okay. I have done it. All right. <laughs> I don't even know why people are leaving because people don't like when I'm savage and I'm, tr and I'm honest, but whatever. Uh, we don't need them here anyways. Um, but when we see price move up higher. It's just, it's just price taking out people's stops, guys. For the other, let's say the other 25% of traders that did use correct, uh, let's say good risk management, maybe even, maybe not good risk management, but just had a stop loss. This is price moving up higher for stop losses to be hit, okay? And at the end of the day, if we look at price action of where we are, we still have not broken the yearly highs that were made just a couple weeks ago. Okay, about two weeks ago, we broke the previous yearly highs right here from October 31st, went up a little bit higher, and then now we're right here. So there's still a val very valid potential even head and shoulders on this lower time frame. I know some of you guys I saw in the chat have recognized this smaller head and shoulders that could be forming, right? Now, it's not technically a head and shoulders done until the neckline breaks, right? That's why I said it could be formed. But uh, hope is definitely not lost for the dollar index yet, guys, okay? I mean, it does look bullish. It does look like it can go higher, but, um, and if it does go higher, it, what, what is this going on right here? What is this? Hold on. You guys see how that's moving all around? The moving average is not supposed to move like that. I think there's some little, some little glitch going on with the dollar index real quick. You guys see that? That's weird. That's not supposed to happen. You guys see how when I'm scale scrolling in and scrolling out, the moving average is moving? That's really, really weird. Okay, let's just delete that for a second. Let's put this back in. Okay, let's go back here. Let's put it on 50. Whoa, what is going on with my charts, guys? There's like, this is left price scale. That's not supposed to be there either. There's some weird, wacky stuff going on right now. Hold on, let's just like calm down for a sec, see what's going on. Okay, let's put this back to my color that I like to use, which is like a dark green. 
All right, that was that was weird, guys. Okay, sometimes Trading View has these like weird little glitches. Okay, I don't know. I don't know why you guys leave. Like straight up, like like guys, why would you only be here for like a couple minutes and then leave? Like it doesn't make any sense. Like if you, if you have family obligations or something like that, like I mean, go for it. But like seriously, guys, if you can't take a couple minutes of your life, like and just dedicated to freaking learning like holy crap it's it blows my mind guys like people say they want to be successful but then they don't even want to put in the work that it takes to be successful like don't if you wonder why you're broke and you're not making money like don't don't point fingers at other people like look at yourself and for, for a lot of you guys i'm not even talking to you guys you know it's just like the people that come in here for like two minutes like don't like something I say and then leave because they want to get all up in their feelings about it. So it's just like, it's just crazy, crazy, crazier. Like just put in the freaking work guys. All right. So anyways, dollar index, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, still potential downside. We could still see a double top, like a, a kind of a complex, almost like triple top two forming in this area. We'll see what happens. All right. But Let's get into like the trades that we're in right now. Let's let's uh, we'll, we'll talk about what I'm interested in, and then also like vice versa with Euro USD, right? Euro USD right now is like taking out all the stops. So you guys know actually we sold up here. This is one of our trades from last week. One of the the trades that we placed last week was we literally sold at one fourteen forty, right at the top here. Granted, we took profits a little early, right? We took profits. I think somewhere around this range is where we took profits on a drop. So we didn't we didn't catch our whole drop. Our our take profit was right here though. So yeah, I mean, pretty decent setup right there. Okay. But Euro USD moving down to take stops, same thing with the opposite of the dollar index, right? It has, if we look at it on the weekly, there's this large, very, very large head and shoulders, right? Very large head and shoulders. But again, according to the rule, I don't need to beat a, beat a dead horse, right guys? Like according to the rule, you know that we need to break the neckline. Neckline hasn't broke yet. So this isn't, and, and more importantly, we don't know, even if it breaks the neckline, we still have to wait to see what happens because it could just very well be a, um, a, a fake breakout just as we saw a few weeks ago. Okay. So let's get into what I'm, what we are interested in now, USD Swiss Frank, this trade has been running since last week. All right. It's been running for almost a whole week now. Really hasn't done us, it's, it's really done us dirty. We talked about on yesterday's webinar what's going on with it. Uh, we would have liked to see this bear flag work out, obviously work out a little bit better and not, and not, and not break down and, and we wanted it to move in our, or not break up and we wanted it to move lower. There's still very much so a fighting chance with this pair. Um, parity is a very strong level. If you guys, this is the only pair that we have on our entire chart. Pretty much, I think, even if you look at like every chart right now, I think this is the only pair that is this close to parity. Okay, if you don't know what parity is, write it down. It means it's when it's one currency is worth the one of the other currencies. So one to one, like literally right now, one Swiss franc, if you go and exchange your US dollar or you have your Swiss franc, you'll get one US dollar for your Swiss franc or you'll get one Swiss franc for your US dollar. Pretty credible, pretty incredible times. It means that the economies are have the same strength, okay? I mean, there's there's underlying stuff like that. Don't take that. Don't take that like just for what it is. Um, don't take that for face value. Okay. They, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the economies are the same. It just means that the exchange rates are the same. Okay. Anyways, uh, parody has proven we saw last night or for most of you guys last night or yesterday or whatever. For me, it wasn't, it was actually, no, I'm sorry. It was your guys' morning. For me, it was last night is we saw a rejection off of parity. We actually saw two rejections off of parity, right? We, on this lower time frame, on the one hour, spiked up to parity, came back down, spiked back up to parity, came down. Now we're coming back up again. We can see this 50, this is the 50 EMA, 50 exponential moving average. It's really holding price right now. Um, I would really like to see, you can even see, I put in this little channel tool. If you guys don't know how to use this channel tool, it's right over, I mean, I keep it saved. You guys see right here, this little toolbar. I keep it saved down here with my, little favorites, but it is right around here at the bottom regression trend. Okay. And then with your regression trend, you can actually set like the deviation for it. So I'll give you like an example, like this little one right here, you can like put, set a point, set two points, boom. And then, I mean, that looks pretty good right there, but you can, there's deviation, um, upper deviation, lower deviation. You can see, see lower deviation goes to the low of the period in that area. Whereas if there's a little bit of deviation, then that, that's 
generally going to go to more of like the body close rather than the low lows. So you can see, you can really adjust this and, and kind of set it how, how you want it, whatever looks better to you. Okay. That, that's one reason I like trading view. It's very, um, very user friendly and very customizable. Okay. Anyways, with USD Swiss franc, um, you know, there's still a fighting chance with this pair. Like I said, with the dollar index, there's still a fighting chance of the dollar index moving lower as well. Can we get stopped out? Does it look like there's a, there's a, a good possibility we get stopped out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we use good risk management at the end of the day. Okay. That's why we use good risk management. If we do see stop, uh, stop out, we're probably going to see uh, USD Swiss franc go a little bit higher, probably up to this area, or maybe even a little bit higher, kind of take out the stops that are a little bit around this liquidity zone. Um, maybe even like a crazy scenario would be maybe even we break the yearly highs of right here and then potentially go lower on a weak dollar. So that's a very possible scenario. Like we said, we took the risk of, you know, wait of this seeing this move to the downside and then waiting for this flag and then we were looking for price to go lower it doesn't always happen like that it doesn't always work out right so that is that um i'll tell you guys pound yen on the higher time frame this is the trade that we took earlier this week very quick little just intra intra week trade didn't didn't work out we ended up getting stopped out could i have had our stop loss a little bit differently um looking in hindsight absolutely right i mean we can see that a majority of the stop losses were going to be just above this previous zone right here. So we could have had our stop loss a little bit out of the way. This is also weekly R1. So we could have had it above R1 and, you know, seen this kind of in hindsight, but obviously that didn't happen. Okay. I want to just show you guys this pair on the monthly, just to kind of show you guys what I'm looking at. Look at that on the monthly. All right. Where do you, I mean, if you guys have any concept of price action and any skill of reading the chart, right? Your, your intuition, your trader's intuition should tell you probably something like this is going to happen on this pair, okay? Right? Really nice exhaustion candle, really nice bearish candle, tons of consolidation recently, um, really nice correction, really nice bearish engulfing candle, really nice overall bear flag and in, in downtrend, multi-year downtrend on this pair. So, uh, you know, obviously it's hard to take a long-term trade or have that long-term outlook and then take a, 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 a trade where we only had a 30 pip stop loss, but there was conviction to the downside when we took the trade, right? This is flagging a little bit. I thought that maybe we would break the support right away, but this support is definitely this, this four hour support is proving to be a lot stronger. Okay. So we're going to wait, we're going to wait for confirmation. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that very quickly. Let me just go object tree. And oh, all sorts of stuff on here. This is all like previous trades and setups and stuff. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Okay. We'll delete that. We'll delete that. We'll delete that. We'll delete that. And we'll delete that. What's this? Okay. That's locked. Okay. All right. That is everything. Okay. Cleaning, cleaning things up. It's a new year. Do some end of year cleaning on all this stuff. Okay. Um, and then we have, I was just looking at that doesn't mean nothing. we're just just playing around okay so that's that's a cleaned up version that's a cleaned up chart we definitely need to break this support first the support trend line or this zone we need to break that definitely but uh we're, we're gonna be definitely looking for some long-term shorts i think coming up on pound yen um on yen, yen strength okay dollar yen uh dollar yen is getting very close to a very strong supply level this is the weekly right so this is going all the way back to like january of last year so we're getting back to some previous highs of this year too. So this was our high of this year. And then here we go just a couple months or actually not even a couple months ago, just a couple weeks ago, because this is on the daily. Uh, that's the high. And then we're coming back up to this area. So, so we might actually get this triple top and then move lower. Uh, you can see I put the regression channel on here so you can see the channel. Um, I just call it a channel. I don't necessarily always call it a regression channel. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe some downside on that pair as well. That's why I just have them in red as I'm looking at them. AUD USD. We just took this trade, right? Took this trade. Perfect entry. Good example, guys, of, of a trade where we take a trade and it goes right into profit, right? It's already, I mean, when I say already, keep in mind, I mean, it's not like a lot. It's like seven pips in profit. It's nothing crazy. Okay. Um, there's some good price action on this pair. Some really nice price action. Biggest thing that we're looking at with this long-term trade uh, is that we're, we're now starting to create an uptrend. And what I believe is happening in the same way I believed what was happening at this downside was the Wyckoff method, right? We, we were seeing 
we we're seeing uh, some accumulation happen. We saw a spring happen. And now then we saw a markup. Now we're seeing a little bit more accumulation. And you know, we might not always get that spring on the low risk buys on this area. Okay. We may see price just finish its markup phase all the way up to 7433, which is where our targets are. Or 7450, which our targets are 7433. But it's a good trade. 50 pips stop loss, 207 pip take profit. Our target makes sense. Our stop loss makes sense, right? If we put on the four hour, our stop loss really makes sense. It's a little bit below S1 on the weekly. It, we have this kind of liquidity zone where probably a lot of stops are. So if we do see this, this pair pull, push down, it's probably going to reverse right above our stop loss, which is why we have the stop loss where it is. So we don't get stopped out and then we'll see price go lower. But you know, most, uh, most favorable scenario and would obviously what I would like to see is something like this, right? I'd like to see like a break above here, maybe some consolidation, maybe a break lower and then moving up high. Okay. So very possible things on this NZD USD kind of similar situation. Um, it's in a, this descending channel. So just something to keep in mind if it breaks out of this channel, that's going to also be really nice to show to be a kind of like a confluence to strength on AUD USD because these two pairs have a positive correlation. Then we have USD CAD. Uh, USD CAD is still in this channel. It is still just sticking in this channel. I know we were looking for a break of this channel somewhere down here. We didn't get that break and it just, it keeps going. Uh, do I think this pair is going to go down at some point? Absolutely. I'm very, very clear with this setup that if and when this channel breaks to the downside, you know, I, with the way price action is looking, it looks like USD CAD. I mean, maybe we'll double top right here. Maybe we'll double top, maybe push a little bit higher just to grab all those buy orders and then push price down. All right. But something like this is what we are looking for. The same way, again, to add to, for some of you guys that are new, check this out. This is, I'll keep showing this guys. I'll toot my own horn when I can, because this is, this is good stuff to show you guys. I called this buy zone down here, September of September uh, 14th. Okay. September, October, November, almost three months ago, September, October, November. Yeah. Almost three months ago. Holy cow. Time like flies guys. Look at this. I said when price got down to this area, buy zone, this is our buy zone. And what happened? Let's see. Got, got down to the buy zone. It moved up higher, right? We didn't take this trade because there's this nasty, nasty gap, lots of manipulation, lots of stuff. Granted should have stuck with the analysis. Hindsight is always 2020, but I mean, I told you guys buy zone targeting 134. That's what we were looking for. That was the setup. Um, so it still is very possible that USD CAD goes up to 134, which would kind of, if we like, even, even if we like draw a trend line, it would kind of make sense for price to like go up here, maybe the next uh, day spike up, hit 134 and then just drop like a rock. But we are for sure selling if it gets that high guys, like no doubt about it. Absolutely guaranteed. We are selling. This is a guaranteed setup for us. I mean, when I say guaranteed, I'm not talking like guaranteed money. I'm talking like guaranteed as is, as in we are going to take this trade. Uh, Jacob asked, does parity help price move in a smoother channel? Not necessarily, but parity is just an institutional level and institution, institutional and psychological level of support or resistance, depending on what side, um, what side of, of, of pre what side price is on. Okay. Uh, Euro NZD, Euro NZD. This would have been this would have been the setup, right? We instead of you know, we we get in a sell on Euro AUD and Euro CAD, and then Euro NZD. We decide to sit on the sidelines because there's New Zealand dollar news at the beginning of this week. But I told you guys, you know, I told you guys this pair is trending. Look at this on the weekly, right? Big, big, big uptrend break on the weekly. This pair has some major downside coming. So does Euro AUD. So does Euro AUD. I mean, this is the trade too. We're in we're in some nice profits on this pair right now. This is the, our trade currently that we're in. Played with us a little bit. We entered down here on the break, actually ended up, did make that retest of this trend line and then moved lower, came back and actually retested where the, where the, I guess the, no, this is the weekly. Yeah. The weekly, um, pivot point is, and then nice bearish engulfing candle. And now it's, now we're pretty home free on this one, which at least looks like it, right? We should, we should close pretty bearish on this pair. Nice bearish engulfing candle on the weekly. That would be an ideal situation with this pair. So that's, pretty a, fl a flawless setup running. Uh, Euro CAD, 
taken a little bit more time, but it's doing its thing. Just been in some major consult. I mean, keep in mind guys, six of these candles, if we're looking at the four hour chart is one day. So we've got literally two days of just sideways consolidative price action. It's really consolidating right around this. I don't like this green. I think this green is too dark for my liking. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Um, consolidating around this 50 EMA, um, consolidating right below the weekly pivot point. So consolidating below this, this previous low. So uh, lots of good price action, you know, not, not a whole lot of price action, not a lot to work with, but overall our perspective on the weekly, nice exhaustion candles. So I'd like to see some downside on this pair. And then USD Singapore dollar. I'm still watching USD Singapore dollar guys. I'm not, I'm not ready to get in yet. I'm really glad we didn't pull the trigger on it because I, I was considering getting into USD CAD down here on this bearish engulfing four hour. This is just a good example of why discipline plays a good role, guys. I, I told myself I would rather wait for the break, which um, because it, it's such a strong, we've been in such a strong uptrend for 2018. I, I, could, I said I, I'd like to wait for this break and then sell. So, um, but from a just scaled out perspective on the weekly, definitely is showing some signs of reversing. And so we'll look for um, that in the upcoming weeks. And then finally, we have our CAD yen trade. So this pair, this pair got a little sweaty, right? This pair got a little sweaty because we entered down here, uh, moved right up, came back down, moved back up, came all the way back down, moved back up, right? This is especially if you're over, when I say sweaty, I just mean like it, it got somewhat near our stop loss. I don't care at the end of the day, we're risking 1% on this trade. So it's not like, it's not like I, I truly, I mean, it's money. So I'm not trying to like, let's keep that in mind. Like I'm, it's just like, I don't really have a, a, a big emotional attachment to 1% of my account. Yeah. 1% of my account is over a thousand dollars, but like, I, I know it's, I'm going to make it back. It doesn't matter if I lose 1% because I am so consistent with my risk to reward and my risk management. And, my, and I know long-term my analysis is sound. I don't care if I lose a trade. I don't care if I lose 10 trades in a row, literally. Like my, if you guys look at my risk of rune, it's like I, I have to lose like 50 trades in a row. Not, I think more than 50 trades in a row to lose, uh, to, to, to blow my account, right? Like it's like something like 70 trades in a row to blow my account. Like I'm not worried about losing a couple trades here and there. Even if a couple turns into five, even if five turns into 10, I'm not, I don't care because long term, I know it, it comes back. It always does. It always, it always does. It always does. And if you guys have been in this group for months and months, or not, not months and months, but years now, you, you guys can attest to the exact same thing. It always comes back. We're going to have our break even months like we've had the past couple months. Then we're going to have our really, really banger months like we did during the summertime, right? July was our best month this year. 15% gains just in July. Okay. And then we have this month, which it's, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, but not like a bad roller coaster. We're still in profit. It's uh, we, we are at about three, a little bit over 3% in profit for the month right now. Watch, let's just, let's just pull up that FX book. Let's, let's pull up that FX book. Why, why do we gotta, why do we gotta like think about what, what profit we're in, right? Let's pull it up. Okay. So let's see for the month, this month. Okay. This month we're up two and a half percent. All right. We can see break even month last month. Pretty much break even, very small loss the month before. Pretty much break even, very small gain the month before. July, banger month, 15%, right? Let's look at risk of rune really quickly. Risk of rune. Uh, okay, consecutive losing trades right here. There is a less, look at, read, read that writing, guys. There is a less than 0.01% chance of losing 100% of this account. This will require 53 consecutive losing trades. Okay. Not sweating it guys. Okay. And look at that. Look at my, look at my win loss guys. 54 percent, 53%, 53% win rate, but I'm still profitable. Right. Right. It kind of says something, right? I've, I've only won 40% of the longs that I've, that I've taken of the buys I've taken. I've won 64% of the shorts I've taken. So it looks like I'm better at trading at selling than I am buying. Look at my worst trade. My worst trade, October 24th, 169 pips. Best trade, November 14th, just two weeks ago, 430 pips, right? 
430 pips. This was, this was gold, right? Gold. This is that gold trade where we bought gold at 1203. You guys remember gold, right? Right back here. Here's gold uh, right here, right here. We bought gold right here, 1203, right? Our stop loss was just below right here. It was at like 1296. I remember that we had like a 70 pip stop loss and our take profit was 1219 right there. We, we took profits really early. Granted, we took profits really early. We didn't. That's one thing I'm personally working on too as a trader, guys. Going into the new year, holding trades, just letting letting them do their thing. Um, every every trade has a trader has their flaws and things they can work on, and that for me personally is something that I can work on. Um, but uh, it it hit our it hit our target right, and even though we closed early because of the way gold is calculated in points rather than necessarily pips, the pips are worth like ten times what the points were. So we made like forty three like what we call our pips, but it was actually 430 pips according to my index book, all right? So that is that. I think previous to that trade, we our best trade was still like an actual counting terms pips was like 270 pips that we made on like a CAD Swiss franc trade or a CAD yen trade a couple weeks ago or a couple, like a month or two ago, okay? All right, anyways. So that's hopefully that that puts some things into perspective for you guys that you don't have to be a, a super accurate trader. You don't need to win 80% of your trades and you can still win long term. Okay, guys, uh, just like yesterday, 10% billionaires. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, guys, I, I'm, I'm going to pull that up one more time because I'm actually going to be sharing. I'm going to share this. This is going to be a public uh, webinar that I share today, but I, I'm, so I'm just going to share it real quick. Uh, sorry if you guys saw it yesterday, but I'm just going to pull it up really quickly. Um, boom. check this out guys. Check this out. If you didn't see this yesterday, let me see if there's anybody on here. Uh, I think most of you guys probably saw it yesterday. It doesn't look like there's anybody brand new on here. So this is just more for the recording side of things. Cause this is going to be public and I'm going to put on YouTube and everything, but this is the top like 72 traders that have ever lived. And if you take the average of all 72 of these, it's about 32% per year that they're doing in returns. Okay. Um, there's some exceptions to the rule, like Richard Dennis, who, which actually Richard Dennis is a great example. Cause you can be like, well, Richard Dennis, he did 120% a year, but look at his win rate guys. Go, go look up, go freaking Google Richard Dennis and learn about his win rate. He won like 10% of the trades that he, that he placed 90% of his trades were losing, but he still made He made more returns than some of the greatest people that have, you know, some of the, the most wealthiest people, George Soros is in here. Okay. There's a lot, a lot of other people, Warren Buffett is in here okay look at warren buffett you guys know warren buffett obviously right multi 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 billionaire one of the richest people in this entire world one of the wealthiest people in this whole world and how did he do it he did it by staying consistent for 54 years in compounding and getting 23 percent a year it's literally all he did guys no secret he did it with forex guys he did it with foreign exchange i mean there's other things too stocks commodities options mutual funds all that good stuff but we're just talking about investments in general right if you can find an investment that you can make 23 percent on a year for the next 54 years of your life you'll have as much money as warren buffett does <laughs> pretty pretty crazy right you should probably follow what works don't follow all the why would you follow that guru on facebook that just told you he, he turned a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars last night but he's freaking working at the corner store driving a Honda, a, a 90, 90, 1997 Honda Civic guys, right? Like, come on guys. Like, let's get real with your education and, and like, let's like thought, like don't let social media in a screenshot from some freaking weirdos, uh, change your perspective on everything. Okay. All right. So just, just, just stay with it. Okay. Stick with it. Okay. So anyways, that's what we've got guys. Those are the trades that we've got running. Um, yeah, that's, that's all we've got. Okay. So I hope you guys had some fun today. I hope you guys are learning a lot. Crypto is like going down the drain right now. Um, I'm really not interested in crypto until it goes even lower. But other than that, guys, let's let our trades run and ride. We'll see how they play out. We have some very, I think the, the next couple months and the upcoming year is looking very bright with our future. Okay. Very, very bright. And I'm telling you guys, and I know I've been saying this for a while. It's happened in the past. We've had some trades like this. Obviously July was a great example. Um, I think one trade in July, we made some really nice profits on, um, and that's what made a majority of our profits in July. Um, maybe some could say maybe we over traded this month a little bit. At one point we were at 6% in profit for the, for the month. Now we're down to 2%, but at the same time we have these potential trades where if all of these trades hit our take profit, I think it's something like 
ballpark somewhere between 15 and 20 percent gain on our account it's a one it's an average of a one to three risk to reward or better with all of the trades that we're currently in i know that much okay so um although the month is going to close like this uh, around here probably um we i'm hoping to see december be a very good month for us i'm telling you guys a trade where we make 10 percent 15 percent 20 percent on is coming Okay. It's, it's coming. It's coming. And that you we only need like one or two of those a year. We, we only really need one of those a year, one of those crazy wild good trades. And then if we can get some other good trades here and there where we have a 1% risk for 2% gain and make a little bit of 2% chunks or 4% chunks or 1% chunks, that's great. Okay. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, if you need anything, feel free to reach out to me and I'll see you guys on tomorrow's webinar. Take care guys.